Have you ever felt that your clothes just not taking up enough space? Or have you ever felt that it's so clean that it's getting on your nerves? Or have you ever felt that your clothes just doesn't have enough characters to look cool? Well in that case, Java is the language for you! Okay fine, Java's not all that bad, but yuck, it's long. Hello everybody, I'm Karara and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do Yusako in Java. I've already made my C++ video and I think that C++ is a language for the job when it comes to Yusuko, but a lot of people learn Java outside of Yusuko and do it for other things like school. That's because Java is a super useful language for learning things like inheritance and all those other programming concepts, and it's also a super easy first language to learn. It was my first language too, but I eventually shifted over to C++ as I got more into Yusuko. But if you're not super interested in going really far in Yusuko, then Java is a perfect language and you don't have to do much more than that. I personally like to use the tool for the job, which is why I use C++, but Java works just as well. So let's get into the details! Starting with the IDE, REPL. That's right. I swear they're not sponsored by REPL, but like, REPL's amazing. Dude, I didn't even know they had a Java thing, but they do. And you can still share it all across the globe, you don't even have to keep it on one computer. But what's good about Java is that IDEs are a lot easier to set up and come by, so REPL is not completely necessary. If you're okay with just keeping your stuff on one computer, then you can use something called IntelliJ. And honestly, that's the only IDE I'd recommend because it works on Mac, it works on Windows, and it's just superior to all the other ones. Eclipse sucks, takes too long to look. BlueJ sucks, too simple. IntelliJ is just all around better. It has debugging, it has autocomplete, it has like shortcuts and all that good jazz. So yeah, use IntelliJ or REPL. Up to you. In terms of reference for Java, Java has this whole documentation on it. So, look at all that stuff. There's literally so much I could be scrolling through this for days. It's literally more addicting to scroll through than YouTube. Okay, no, that's not true. But still, there's a lot of stuff on this documentation. And basically, all the classes you're going to use in Java are on here. So, if you're ever confused on what methods the class might have. So, now moving on to interesting stuff. The actual coding. So, first things first, you gotta read stuff in you gotta read stuff out. Read, read out, no, print out, yeah, that's how you say it. Tragically, Java is a lot more annoying to do this than C++, but here we go. There you go, now you see why I don't like Java for using code. Look at all that nonsense just to read things in and read stuff out. Okay, so first you gotta import java.io.star, that basically includes all the input-output stuff. Then you gotta throw an IO exception, god dang it. And then, you gotta make a new scanner, with this massive line. Enough getting triggered about Java, Java's a fine language, okay, we're good. So then, if you wanna read stuff in, you do sc, which is your scanner, dot next int, or next string, or next whatever, next line. And then you store it. To write to a file, you make something called the buffered writer. And then, within the buffered writer, you make a new file writer, and then you put in your file name here. And then, if you wanna write to it, you do this. If you want to make a new line, you put the slash n, and at the very end, don't forget to close it, otherwise it's not going to work. Let me run it for you guys. Whoop, forgot to include util as well, because scanner is part of the util class. java.util.scan. Alright, I ran it, and now it should have put hi hi in x.out. Dude, what a polite program, saying hi to me. And see, it did it on a different line because we put that slash n. Epic! Alright, now we gotta store stuff. So, first things first, to store stuff, we have to make our variables, and these are the different types you could have. You could have an int n, which basically is a number between 1, 2, 3, etc. You could have a double, which is like a decimal. You could have a care, which is a character, which is like a letter A or something like that. And then there's longs and long longs. So longs are just really long ints, like really big ints, and then long longs are super super big ints. Basically exactly the same as C++ if you guys watched that video. And then you also gotta know about strings, and the way you do that is just capital string like that. String s is equal to blah blah blah. Well, blam. One important thing you gotta know for Java strings is that if you wanna convert a string to an integer, for example, let's say that string s is like one or something. So if you wanna convert s to an integer, you do int i equals integer dot parsint s. And then i would be set to one. And then next, to store variable length things, like everybody wants to store, you gotta use something called an array list. So you do array list, and then you do integer al is equal to new array list. Bro, I'm already getting tired of typing like that. And then if you want to add something to it, you just do al.add. And that's basically all you got to know for array list for now. Moving on. Array, just fixed length arrays. So basically what you do is you do int, and then you the type that you want in your array, and then you put brackets like that, and then you put the name of the array, and then you set it equal to something. Now, if you want to make something that's initialized to all zeros or all null or whatever, you gotta do this. New int 
and then this, and then put the number of elements you want near it. So like, let's say 10. So now we have a 10 array filled with zero. F. Another thing you could do if you want to just directly initialize stuff, you could do like this, and then one comma two comma three comma four. And now, now, I is just under four length array with one, two, three, four in it. Very cool. Whoops, I'm trolling. I got messed up with C++. Java does not have long long, so let's take that out. Whoops, the daisy. And we can't call I twice, let's do I array. There we go. We're making mistakes today, boys, but don't worry, we're fine. And then, if you want to map one thing to another, let's say you want to map 1 to like 5, and then like 120 to 2, but you only want to take two spaces to do that, then you use something called a hash map. What's nice about hash map is that it only takes space up to how many things you put in it. And you don't need an array to do it, so... That basically means you can have like 1 and 120 and still map the two things, but only take two spaces. If you use an array, you'd have to have 120 things and fill the rest with like random stuff. So if you want to insert something, you just do hm.put, and then you put the thing you want to map from, and then the thing you want to map to. Epic. And then if you want to get the thing, you do hm.get1, and that would return 5. Cool! Now we're ready to move on to mass stuff. So the mass stuff that Java has are basically the same thing as C++. You got min, max, absolute value, and power. And it's basically exactly the same as C++, except you just had to add a max dot in front. So if you want to do like absolute value of negative five, you just do that. Or if you want to do power of like five to three, then you do pow of five and then you do three. And if you want to do min, you do like that. And if you want to do max, you just do that. Java also has sorting things, so you can either sort an array list or an array. There's two different ways to do it. So if you want to sort an array, let's make an array int. If you want to sort that, you just do arrays.sort a. And then we can just print out a with the for each loop, which is written like this, for int i in a, print out i. And this system.out.println basically just prints it to the console, it doesn't print it to a file. So let's try that. Cool, one, two, three, four, sort it. And then if you want to sort an array list, let's try that. So I made my array list, and then if you want to sort that, you do collections.sortal. And then let me print that out for you guys, and then run it. There you go, an epic one, two, three, four, just as expected. Unfortunately, Java doesn't have very good binary search like C++ does, so honestly, if I was doing it, I would just code the binary search myself. Other important data structures. Data structures are my favorite, almost more favorite to me than chalk. Uh, I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, moving on. So if you want to do a queue like in C++, what you do is you use something called a length list. So basically what the purpose of this is, is so that we can make a line. So if we first put like a 2 in the line, and then we put a 3 in the line, and then we put a 1 in the line, then we would take people out of the line in the order 2, 3, 1. So if you want to do that in code, all you would do is you make a link list, and then if you want to add to your line, you do ll.add, and then if you want to take out of your line and also return the value of it, you just use pull. So let's print out the first thing in our line and then take it out. What we do is system.out.println and then we do ll.pull. If we just want to look at the first thing in the line but not take it out, then we would just use ll.p. So let's try adding a 2 also. And then let's also print out the p. So let's look at what this is supposed to do. We add a 1 to our line and then a 2 to our line. So the first person in our line should be a 1. But we don't remove him from the line yet, right? He's still standing in the line, taking up all that space, so we want to get him out of there. So we print out ll.pull, which will take the first guy, which is still 1, and remove him. So that means if we take a peek after, it should be 2. Let's run that and see whether we get what we expect. There you go, 1, 1, 2. And then stack is just like stack, and basically what that does is it does a reverse line. You put people in the line, but you take from the back. Dude, that seems so unfair. You go in line first, but you get taken out last. How late? Wait, that's, well, I mean, if I get to the line last, like I always do, in this perfect situation. Huh. Anyways, so stack integer. You can always do stack with recursion, but if you don't want to worry about recursion and all that nonsense, stacks work as well. If you want to add something to the stack, you just do s.add. If you want to take something off, you just do s.pop. And if you want to look at the top of it, you just do s.p. Pretty simple. And then the last data structure we're gonna look at is the set, which basically only keeps track of distinct elements. So if you add a bunch of ones, it's only gonna keep one of those ones, and if you add a bunch of twos, it's only gonna keep one of those twos, but if you add a one and a two, it'll keep both of them. So basically you just do set or set integer, and then s is equal to new, 
but unfortunately set is an interface which basically means that it's not an actual thing so you have to use a specific type of set and the one that I would recommend is just using hash set. If you want to add to your set, you just do s.add1. And if you want to iterate through the set, you just use your for each loop. So that's basically it. Of course, there's for loops and if statements. I will go over those real quick. So fours are like this. For int i equals zero, i is less than 10. i plus plus. And that basically goes from zero. Every time it goes through the loop, it adds one up to 10. So it goes through it 10 times. There's a while loop as well, which you do wait while some like integer is less than 10 and then you do stuff inside the for loop. So it'll just keep going through this loop until the top is satisfied. And then if statements are just if, else if, and else. If the first thing's true, it goes here. If it's not true, then it goes here. If this thing's true, then it goes into this. Otherwise it goes to here and it does this. And last but not least, we got to talk about methods. So basically you put everything in this method called main, okay? But if you want to make your own method, you put it within the outside thing, which is called a class and then you make it with your own name. So you first do what you want to return. So let's say we want to return an int. We put our name, let's say return one, and then we put what we want to put in it. We don't need any arguments, but we'll just give an argument for example purposes, int x, and then we just return one. And that's how you write a method in Java. Very cool. So that's basically all you gotta know for doing Musical in Java. As I said before in the other video, Musical is not really a language oriented thing. You don't have to know that much of the language, just all these basic things and then you're good. And as I said before, Java is just kind of ugly, let's just say that, because it takes so many extra characters to write. But if you already know it and you're learning it for school, which you probably are, then it's fine just to use it because if you're not going super far into Musical, learning C++ is just not worth it. So that's all I got to say about Java. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, as always, leave a like and subscribe for more. If there's any other usable crash courses you guys want me to make specifically, just let me know down in the comments and I will be sure to do them. Other than that, I'll probably be covering stuff that I think are useful. And thank you guys so much for watching again, and see you guys next time.